This is something that happened to me and my older brother years ago when we were younger. I've always been reluctant to talk about it due mainly to the fact that the people I have decided to tell never believed me, but I'm hoping you guys here may understand it differently. We were born and raised in Scotland, in the Lowlands, near the border between Eyre and Dumfries. Our family had lived there for generations and, as such, we almost had a natural knowledge of the local area and knew all the best and most beautiful spots. This happened back in the 1980s. I was about 11 and my brother would have been around 16. It was the summer holidays and, as such, in Scotland, the weather was shit. However, being Scottish meant that a heavy downpour didn't deter us from going out and enjoying ourselves, especially in a time before mobile phones and tablets. My brother woke me up one morning at about 6am, tossing a waterproof coat onto my face and shouting at me in his usual overzealous manner. He said we were going for a hike for the day and a smile crept across my face. I loved the hikes and the antics me and my brother got up to when on them. We left the house with slices of burnt toast in our mouths and began hiking west out of our village. In no time at all, we were surrounded by the serene isolation of the Scottish wilderness and on a trail that had trees looming over us either side blotting out the grey sky above and casting a dark canopy of shadows. We had hiked down this muddy dirt trail for what felt like an hour and the rain was still pouring. My brother decided to take us off trail, which wasn't abnormal. I understand that in some of the large national parks in the US, it isn't a good idea to stray off the established trails, but here in Scotland, it isn't as much of a big deal nor is it as dangerous. We clambered into the undergrowth, tearing our way through the thick vines and heavy leaves as kids do and came out into an opening. I could see by the look in my brother's eyes that he had been here before and another untidy trail that was to our left confirmed this to me. My brother beckoned me towards him and pointed ahead, pulling me to his field of view. From where I was stood, you could see a bed of water. It could have been a puddle yet, the water was crystal clear. Again, this wasn't abnormal as the Scottish lowlands are full of locks, ponds, rivers and streams, and during childhood, we found ourselves stumbling across them regularly. We headed towards it, but the way was blocked off by some pretty thick broken tree trunks and many brambles and thorns. My brother asked me to go through and check out the mysterious body of water to see what it was as I could fit through the gap beneath the trunks and it saved him the hassle of hacking us a trail for no reason. I agreed, relishing the opportunity to lead some of my own adventuring and got straight on my hands and knees, crawling under the rotting bark up to my chest in thick, brown mud. It took me a few minutes and I was nicked by a few thorns here and there, but for the most part, I managed to sliver out unscathed. From where I was stood, you could see down to this small pond, about 15 feet long and 11 feet wide, from a small, rocky balcony. There was an almost man-made looking trail that wound down to the shore of the pond, the water of which was as clear as a crystal, to use a cliche simile. My brother shouted through, asking what it looked like. I found myself ignoring him, the scene before my eyes was like nothing I had ever seen and I found myself enchanted. I walked down the trail, my brother's shout seemed to fade out. I lost sight of the pond as I passed behind a single layer of evergreen trees that followed the windy trail down. As the pond came back into view, I inhaled sharply at the sight of a huge, black stallion. It was one of those steeds that had a thick mane down the back of its legs and the whole beast was dripping wet, as if it had climbed out of the pond moments ago, which it must have because I didn't see it anywhere else. 
It was featureless except for its glowing red eyes and one pulsing vein running down its nose. It was a terrifying beast that would usually have me running for the hills. However, for some reason, I found myself walking towards it with one hand outstretched. It neighed and reared up, seeming to become excited at my approach. I drew closer to it, its eyes like hot coals burning me, sucking me into its demonic grasp and its hair like seaweed. I was close when I felt a heavy hand yank me back and my brother wail, No! He covered my eyes and started shoving me back up the trail, screaming at me not to look back. He pretty much threw me back through the bush, scratching my face and he came through himself seconds later, picking me up and throwing me back onto the trail we had come from. We ran all the way home and told no one. We spoke about it to each other and my brother admitted that he had seen it too and that he thought it was a Kelpie. A supposed to be mythical creature from Scottish law, and that if I had touched it, according to legend, I would have stuck to it and been dragged to the depths of the pond. That was the first time I'd ever heard of a Kelpie, and I know now the stories are more than just that. I think even stranger than my encounter with a supposedly mythological creature is the pond itself. We went back multiple times and never found it again, despite finding the first clearing. Years later, we Google Earth searched the surrounding area and turned up nothing, making the whole experience even creepier. Hey guys, Brothers Jackson here. Um, that was one true scary Kelpie encounter. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I think hopefully this week, probably Tuesday or Thursday, I want to be uploading four true scary cryptid stories. Um, uh, I actually made a proper rookie error on that. I recorded it, started editing it. I was like, oh, this sound quality sounds a bit terrible. And I'd forgot to change the settings on, on my software to record from, from, <laughs> from a proper mic and it had just used my laptop mic. That is one stupid mistake to make. However, I feel like maybe we've all done it once. Maybe. I hope. Um, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more. Continue to share my videos because I have had you know, this month I really needed it to try and get to a thousand. I've actually had one of the slowest months since I've started re-uploading. Um, so, to tell you the truth, I don't think I'm going to hit a thousand subs before the deadline. Uh, it is a bit crushing, I'm not going to lie. However, just keep sharing my videos because we can still do it. And we will still do it. <laughs> together. Um, but yeah, so, like I say... Like I've been saying lately, don't forget to follow me on social media. You can find the links in the description below because I've started uploading there more. And if you have any stories that you think I might want to read and narrate on the channel, you can also find an email address in the description below. All you have to do is state that I have permission to use your story. And away we go. Um, and that's it, guys. Thank you very much for your continued support. Peace.